In this video, I'd like to continue talking about powers of complex numbers. And in a previous video, we looked at writing a complex number z in its polar form, where we have the magnitude or the absolute value of the complex number multiplied by its direction, where theta is measured relative to the positive real number axes. And we were able to derive this formula known as the Moivre's theorem, where when we raise a complex number to the nth power, we take its magnitude and raise that to the nth power, and we multiply its angle by n. Or in other words, the magnitude is multiplied by itself n times, and the angle is added to itself n times. And what I want to do is look at a different way to derive this formula using Euler's formula. And remember that Euler's formula is essentially this part of our complex number in polar form. It's the direction of the complex number. And this expression, the cosine of theta plus i times by the sine of theta, is equal to e to the i times by theta. So we can rewrite this number in its exponential form as the magnitude of the complex number multiplied by e to the i times theta, where we know that i is just the square root of minus 1, and e is the base of this exponential expression and is equal to 2.7128 and so on. It's an irrational number, so this goes on forever without a pattern. It is similar to the number pi in that regard. And when writing it in its exponential expression, it's much simpler to derive this theorem here. So let's take our complex number z, and we will raise it to the nth power, meaning we will take this exponential form of our complex number and raise all of this to the nth power. Now, we just need to apply a couple exponent rules. Since remember that when we have a product raised to some exponent, that both of these numbers are multiplied by themselves n times, meaning that we have a to the nth power multiplied by b to the nth power. And you can prove this by just rewriting this n times, and you would have a multiplied n times and b multiplied n times. Likewise, when we raise an exponent, to an exponent, then we end up multiplying the exponents. We have x to the y, and we're raising that to the nth power, meaning that we can rewrite this as x to the y times by n. And we can apply both of these ideas to our expression here. We have a product, so the nth power will go to both factors in the product. We will have the magnitude of z, raised to the nth power, and we will have this e to the i times theta also raised to the nth power. But here we have an exponent raised to an exponent, so we can apply this second rule, and we can rewrite this as the magnitude of z raised to the nth power multiplied by this exponent to an exponent, so we will multiply the two exponents. We get e the i times by theta times by n, or I'll just write times by n times by theta. And this right here is equivalent to this. Since in Euler's formula, it's i multiplied by the angle, and this right here is multiplied by i, so that means this must be our angle. And like I mentioned, we can essentially just rewrite it as this now where we have the magnitude of our complex number raised to the nth power multiplied by the cosine of the angle, which is n times theta, plus i times by the sine of the angle, which again is n times theta. Let me just make a little bit more room. And you can see this is exactly what we got when we derived this with a different method. But it is much simpler to prove this statement when we rewrite our complex number in its exponential form since in this exponential form we just need to use these two exponent properties to rewrite this formula or this theorem here. 